Clyde H. Gus Trader. Gus Trader loves the thrill of the sale. From agricultural products to motorcycles and golf cars to the city of Quincy, his career in sales is legendary. Born August 9, 1925 on a farm in Rome, Wisconsin, Trader went to work for Montgomery Ward in 1947 and was offered the job as manager of the Montgomery Ward Farm Store at 927 Main in Quincy when he was only 24 years old. Within two years, the business became the number one farm store in the nation. In 1958, the store held a promotion during which vendors showcased new products. One vendor brought a small vehicle called a go-kart, and Trader's life changed forever. When Montgomery Ward decided the carts didn't fit in with the other products, Trader started his own business and sold them out of his garage at night. He also raced the vehicles on a track near Payson, Illinois. He always would bring about six carts and he'd win every class. The owner of the track didn't like him for doing that, so there was some bumping going on at one of the races and he, he banned Gus for 30 days from racing out there. So he said, nope, you're not going to do that. I'll build my own track. In 1960, Gus and his wife and business partner, Fern, found a site in West Quincy, Missouri, and built TNT Cartways, named after his children, Terry and Tamara. It was the finest go-karting facility in the nation at the time. Professional drivers and local enthusiasts alike frequented the track. TNT was awarded the 1962 National Karting Championship, and 17 national events followed, with the last one held in 1994. When we started out, we weren't nowhere even even competitive. We was lucky if we just made the races when we got to where we was at. But, but, but Gus stayed with us and he said, we'll do what we got to do to get better. And we stayed so years. And first thing you know, Terry was probably one of the best drivers in the nation. And it just went from there. Trader's most well-known race, the Grand Prix of Karting, started as a unique activity for the Dogwood Festival in 1970. The beauty of South Park, the challenging track layout, and the number of spectators were unique to the sport. It was dubbed the best track layout in karting history. And Gus, there's nobody like anybody could put on a race like he could. He could promote it and run it, announce it, he could do it all. He was, you know, you'll just never find a promoter like he is. The Grand Prix reached its pinnacle in 2000 when it had more than 600 entries and a $30,000 driver purse. The infusion of tourist dollars into the local economy was significant. Every hotel and, and motel in Quincy was full. Every hotel in Hannibal was was full. Anywhere they could stay, you know, was was full. The restaurants and the bars, I mean, they had a heyday because the Carters came, so they would spend a lot of money. Another landmark moment in karting and track history was in 1966 when ABC Wide World of Sports televised the national championships from TNT. It was the only time in history that karting was televised nationally by a major network. Television legend Jim McKay was the lead broadcaster. There were more than 500 entries at the event. In 1964, the traders acquired the Harley-Davidson motorcycle franchise. They weren't enthusiasts and, in fact, didn't even know how to ride motorcycles. He could look beyond what was going to happen, you know, you know, especially with the motorcycles. He, you know, when they took them on, how did he know that it was going to grow like it did, you know? He, he wasn't afraid to take a chance. They added Yamaha and Honda products and opened a separate dealership in Quincy. Following a fire, the businesses merged back together, and the West Quincy location became one of the largest volume motorcycle dealerships in the Midwest, with sales of 2,500 motorcycles per year. During his years in the motorcycle business, he was an officer on the board of directors with both the Illinois and Missouri Dealer Associations. Hard work and persistence can really make up for a lot of misfortune. Not all misfortune, of course, but um, I watched them lose their business twice, three times, uh, two, to a five, two to floods and one to a fire. And they just, there wasn't a question of, well, should we go on or should we quit? It was just, we just kept going. And so I could see that even when really bad things happen, you, you can often make up for it by just not stopping. Soon TNT added golf cars to its product line. Trader and his son Terry became consultants for the design of the Yamaha golf car, and TNT was given the first prototype for testing. 
In 1977, TNT became the first Yamaha golf car distributor in the nation, and golf cars now are a major portion of the business. Trader retired in 1995, and in 2007, his son moved the business to its current location at 930 Main. From 1982 to 1984, Trader took the idea of street racing to a national level. He acquired the Professional Karting Association and held a national championship racing series in major venues like California, New York, and Florida. In 2003, he promoted the first vintage karting event in the nation, which is still held today at TNT Kartways. Trader has been elected to the Racing Hall of Fame in Talladega, Alabama, and is the inaugural member of the Vintage Racing Hall of Fame. I think it's often hard for us to set out on a path that might be very different from our family of origin. And uh, he has really carved out a life that is unique to him and that he's enjoyed every minute of. So he has followed the path of his heart. Trader has been an active booster of the Quincy University and Quincy High School basketball programs. He has been inducted into the QHS Sports Hall of Fame he is a golf enthusiast who plays many tournaments and is always looking for a game and a bet. He and Fern are retired and spend their winters in Florida.